HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, I caught up with Mina Barath, who was appointed to the Asian American Commission, the latest on Hiller Sports, and Matt Clark will get you up to date with the latest HCAM programming. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. Hopkinton Hillers Cheerleading hosted a chili cook-off at the Woodville Rod and Gun Club. A good turnout was on hand and plenty of delicious chili was available to taste. HCAM's Mike Terosian was on the scene. Off for a cheerleading fundraiser. All right, and, uh, what are you raising funds for? We are raising funds for the team in general as a whole, for choreography, team apparel, all that fun stuff. Uh, we have seven participants and entries in our chili cook-off. And, uh, and are they uh, doing a, uh, is it a prize for the winner? The first prize is $200, second place is $100, and third place is $50. My dad's in the contest, <laughs> and he's going to win. <laughs> all right, and uh, anyone you want to thank uh, for, for this? Um, the local supporters of Hopkinton and all of the local businesses that supported and donated to our uh, raffle baskets and the Rod and Gun Club for providing the space and all of the cheer parents and team for volunteering today. All right, all right. who do you think is going to win today? My Glenn. dad, my dad, my dad <laughs> is chili. Chili. He's an amazing cook. Love yeah. him. Had his chili before, best chili I've ever eaten. two raffle baskets, one day of beauty basket with several options if you want to read it. And then we also have a taste of Hopkinton basket with several restaurants in town for gift cards. And then we also have a raffle for this beautiful Hopkinton table. Awesome. All right, uh, what's your name? My name's Maddie Strickland. Uh -huh. My name's Bridget LaCroix. And my name's Megan McClay. All right, so, Pat, uh, what are you doing here today? Uh, participating in the uh, chili cook-off for the uh, cheerleaders. Yeah, and you're representing the department? Hopkins Fire yourself? Department, yep. Right, so, Hopkins Fire Department bought all the ingredients, I put it together, and here we are. All right, so uh, tell me about the chili. Well, it is a uh, beer-braised beef chili with bacon. It's got a couple different types of beef. It's got some uh, cube chuck, and it's also got uh, pulled flat iron, and of course, Bacon, bacon goes in everything. Excellent. It's got a heat, but it's a manageable heat. And what is, uh, what is your uh, secret to a good chili? Not necessarily a green, but what's your secret to make, what, what makes a good chili? Just let it uh, simmer together and get all the flavors mixed together. Betcha, yeah. Oh, baby. <laughs> yeah, really great with the avocado. Yeah. Awesome. My daughter. It smells good, Glenn. Yeah, this is my daughter and my stepdaughter. <laughs> Uh, they're both cheerleaders for Hoppington High School, and we're making chili today. Uh, to try to take home the first prize. Woo! Uh, what, what kind of chili did you make? I just made regular beef chili with uh, peppers. Uh, it's kind of sweet, not too hot. So it's a little, it's a little hot, a little sweet, you know, and, just uh, right. What, what's your secret to making a good chili? Good cilantro, fresh cilantro. That's the ticket. So good. Yeah. Right, here we go. Good. Very good. It's done well. We got bacon in there. I made it with beer, 
red and green peppers, onions, jalapenos. And I use chipotle powder to put a little smokiness into it. Um, it's not too spicy. I use um, beer in it and I put bacon and hamburg, red beans, you know. Is this a, uh, is this a family recipe or something? Or? No, it's, I just take ingredients and I modify it myself. So I just get a basic one in my head and then I just add and subtract. My like I took out the cayenne and I added more jalapenos because I don't want to make it too spicy. And, and what's your secret to a good chili? Just time. You gotta let it sit. Everything's gotta melt together very nicely. I didn't have time. I was gonna do it overnight, but I didn't have time to do it last night. But. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so that looks like mine. <laughs> Five pounds of bison in there. Wow. This is triple B chili. Bison, bacon, and beer. And a lot of peppers too, but that didn't start with a P or a B, so. Is this a uh, famous recipe of yours or a favorite uh, thing? Or? Uh, I make it all the time, but this one I actually Googled. I wanted something different, so I got a few ideas off the internet. Okay. And uh, what, what is your secret to a good chip? Um, a lot of peppers and slow cooking. It's all natural too, so gluten free. It's a nice, good, thick chili. Oh, yeah, that is. That's perfect. I was asked to come do a chili cook off, so I was like, okay, that sounds like a great plan, a great way to spend the day. So, got some chili put together for us. And are you a regular chili maker by heart? No, not really. I mean, every once in a while we'll try a different recipe that we find online or something that somebody says, you gotta try it. And what kind of uh, chili did you make today? Well, today I made Aunt Betty's chili. It's a recipe that's been in our family for several generations. It's been changed a little bit here and there over the years, but it always seems to be a good, consistent chili. And what are some of the ingredients that we might find? Not taking any secrets from Yeah, no, no, no secrets, no secrets. Uh, Tabasco, chili powder, grass-fed beef, not your normal, just like uh, hay, and uh, that's it. And what is your secret to a good chili? Follow what the is, recipe. Follow the recipe. <laughs> um, like everybody, time, slow cook it, slow cook it. Hopkinton resident Mina Barath, who is a school committee member and takes part in a number of community programs, recently was appointed by Senator Karen Spilka to the State Asian American Commission. I recently caught up with Mina about the appointment. Tom Nappy here with Mina Barath. Mina, you were recently at the State House and you got appointed to the Asian American Commission. Uh, can you talk about what the Asian American Commission is all about? Sure. Thank you for having me, Tom. Um, this is a pleasure always to be with HCAM. Uh, the Asian American Commission has been in place for about 12 years. And uh, the work of the commission is to advocate for Asian Americans in the Commonwealth. Um, Asian Americans are the fastest growing minority. Uh, in the Commonwealth as well as the nation overall. So it's about understanding some of the issues that they have, also their contributions to the community. Um, so that's the primary work of the commission. And I understand you got appointed as the commissioner of the commission, so could you talk about what some of your responsibilities will be? Um, I guess it's a 15 to 20 member board, and uh, you know there are five appointing authorities. I was appointed by Senate President Karen Spelka. And uh, I'm one of the commissioners. We have a chair, Mr. Pralad, and uh, we have a vice chair, Kim Chong. And uh, I will be working as part of the overall commission. And each one of us can choose to work on some of the subcommittees. And uh, you know, I've just started. I have volunteered to help with the unity dinner that the Asian Com American Commission holds every year. It's in May, and you're invited. Uh, and um, it's uh, one of the biggest fundraisers that the commission does. But also, it's about advocacy. We get key speakers, and we give awards. So I'm helping out with that a little bit. I have also volunteered to help with the finance uh, and administration committee. Um, as it happens with most volunteer roles, it's what you want to make out of that role. Um, uh, the members that I have met so far, they've been wonderful, very welcoming. 
um, the chair and vice chair went out of their way to spend time with me, helping me understand. We also have an um, executive director of the commission, uh, which is a paid position. And her name is Jenny Chang. She has also been extremely helpful. So I am learning along the way and helping out in ways that I, I can. Uh, we get opportunities uh, where we get invited to different forums uh, or to speak for some of the issues. So based on needs, um, I will step up and help out. Can you uh, talk about the process of uh, getting invited or getting appointed to the commission and um, pretty much just walk us through how this came to be? How did you end up getting appointed to the commission? Um, to be honest, it's a bit of a mystery to me, um, but there are portions of it which I'm aware of. Um, so it looks like the Asian American Commission had some vacancy and uh, the appointing authority, as I mentioned, one of the appointing authorities is the state uh, Senate president. And her office reached out to me asking for my bio, and which I shared gladly. And uh, I think they must be looking around to see um, who are some of the potential candidates. Um, and I feel very honored that I got chosen and I got picked to serve in this role. And uh, Senator Swelka picked up the phone and asked me uh, to serve. I was uh, very surprised when she called me and, you know, if she asks you to serve, you serve. Um, and like I said, there are many, many deserving folks in the community that I know of this honor. Uh, I'm just glad that I got chosen this time. And I understand there were three people that were reappointed to the committee and you were one of the three that were newly appointed. Right. Uh, how long will you uh, be on the uh, commission for? It's a three-year term. Three-year term. That's right. Well, that's terrific. Um, talk about uh, what your experience was like at the State House, and I understand there was a ceremony. Yes. Uh, it, it, was a, it was very exciting for me. First of all, I didn't expect it to be as uh, amazing as it turned out to be. I've been there with my husband and my nine-year-old son, and um, a couple of our community members uh, Charu Smita Ram, she does a lot of work in the community. She had come all the way from Lowell and uh, Ravi Dasuri and he got uh, Jignesh. Uh, so there was a little bit of a representation from the community that we went there. And I was sworn in uh, by State Treasurer Deborah Goldberg along with all the other commissioners. There was quite, the, uh, you know, it was quite a ceremony and was very emotional for me. Uh, I am emotional by nature. And, uh, you know, for me, where I come from, you know, I grew up in India and uh, I've been here in the States for 16 years. This is quite a journey. I never expected such a day in my life. And um, so it was, it, was, it was quite something. And uh, Senate President Spelka made the time to join. Um, her regional director, Pooja Mehta, she made the time and they were all there and uh, it was extremely meaningful to me and to be taking oath, uh, it meant a lot to me. Now when you got the phone call asking if uh, you would like to be on this commission, I mean, what was your reaction? Uh, like I was mentioning earlier, I, it was so out of the blue, I was so not expecting it to happen. and to get a call from someone like, uh, uh, you know, Senate President. Um, it's, you know, you're caught off guard a little bit, and at the same time, you want to understand what the responsibilities are before you uh, sign up. Like, are you ready? Uh, what's your uh, situation at home? Will your family support it? Can you do justice to the role that you're signing up to? Um, so all these thoughts were at my mind. Uh, I was actually at the MFA that day, and it was pretty noisy all around me. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but like I said, it's such a great honor. Uh, I never expected to see such a day in my life. Well, I know you certainly do a lot for the community, and I'm sure you're going to serve this uh, commission well. Uh, I understand you also got a tour of the State House. Uh, oh. What was that like? Was there anything that you saw that was that just uh, blew you away in the State House? Um, actually, there were many, many things. I've been to the State House once before, uh, but this was a personal tour by the Senate President, and uh, I was very excited for my son, too, who's nine years old. Uh, 
you know, he has many interests, uh, but this was me having that tour along with my family and seeing my son also getting that exposure. That was quite amazing. And um, just every step of the way, there is so much history in that building. And to be able to experience that, um, that was quite something. Something that stuck out for me, I mean, of course, all the railings, all the artwork, and the new um, Senate, um, it was outstanding. But the one that stuck out to me was uh, a table that was made by Paul Revere. Wow. Uh, that uh, was quite amazing to be able to see that. That's cool stuff. Uh, well, Mina, I know you serve the Hopkinton community well, and I know you'll serve the uh, Asian American Commission well. Uh, congratulations, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for having me. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. So when we first decided to go ahead with the fostering, um, we spoke at length to one of the behavioural specialists to essentially find a dog that would fit in with our lifestyle and that we could truly help. He needs to be in a home where he can just have some love and some confidence installed in him. The first time that Arnold, like I say, pricked his ears and actually came to us and wagged his tail um, was incredible. It really melted my heart to think that he had become that comfortable with us and, you know, opened his heart up to us. Like fostering a dog doesn't mean that you have to give up all of your life commitments. It is something yeah. that can fit around your schedule. I knew it would be incredible to foster a dog and to see them go home for the first time, but actually knowing how much help that you are giving these dogs has been, it has been life-changing. Please visit baypathhumane.org to join our foster family. Welcome back to HCAM News. The high school winter sports season is more than halfway through, and a number of Hiller teams are eyeing a playoff spot. Here's the latest in Hiller sports. This past Tuesday, Hopkinton girls and boys basketball took on Ashland. In the girls game, it was a battle right down to the end. The Hillers led 20-13 at the half, but the game went back and forth in the second half. The Lady Hillers hung on to win the game 31-29. Right now you are looking at the final play of the game, Ashland with one last opportunity, but couldn't hit the shot. The Hillers improved to 5-8 with the win, Ashland falls to 5-9. Lily Morningstar had a team leading eight points, and Alexis Trendle contributed six points in the Hiller's victory. In the boys' game, Hopkinton maintained a healthy lead pretty much the whole way through. They took the game 65 to 45. Stephen Maffiori contributed 12 points, while Tommy Ambersoni netted 11. Brendan Kelly and McCallum Lind both had nine. As the Hillers improved to nine and four on the season, Ashland now two and 12. Hopkinton is just one win away from clinching a playoff spot. Taking a look at the other Hopkinton winter teams, boys and girls indoor track, both five wins and no losses. Girls hockey, three wins, eight losses. Boys hockey, nine wins, four losses, two ties. Boys swimming, eight wins, three losses. And girls swimming, eight wins, two losses. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, February 1st at 5 p.m., local artists and musicians gather to share their music and poetry in a special open mic episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. On Monday, February 4th at 6.30 p.m., Mary McLeod sits down to listen to Phyllis Proya share some of her poetry on a new episode of The Senior View. On Tuesday, February 5th at 6 p.m., 
The Hopkinton Board of Selectmen's meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers boys basketball team takes on the Norton Lancers live on HCAM Ed. On Thursday, February 7th at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton School Committee meeting will air live on HCAM Ed. And on Friday, February 8th at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers girls basketball team takes on the Dover Sherbin Raiders live on HCAM Ed. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers ice hockey versus Medfield game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, and we'll talk to you again soon. The annual Martin Luther King Jr. Day events took place at Hopkinton Middle School this past Monday. Despite very cold weather, many volunteers attended to help Hopkinton organizations and various other great causes. So we have National Honor Society who's doing collection and coloring books for the Respite Center. Um, we have bags for veterans being made. We have cancer bags being made for cancer patients. We are collecting for Marathon School hat mittens, snow pants. Hopkins School, we are collecting zip binders. Um, what other service project? We have um, color a placemat that will go to the surrounding assisted living homes. Um, and so they will get those served with their meals and uh, some with uh, meals for whales as well. So lots of different kinds of variety of things going on. We have some church groups here as well that are participating. I know one is collecting sneakers for Project Just Because. Um, I think the other one is doing the cancer bags. And despite the very cold weather outside, a great turnout today. Uh, could you just talk about the turnout and how things have gone so far? Yeah, so it's going amazing so far. Um, I am very excited to see the turnout because I did have some <laughs> concerns about the weather but you can't take Hopkinton down so we have uh, so many students that are here helping today we're starting to see a lot of community come in and get involved um, they, everyone enjoyed the storyteller she delayed a little bit for us this morning to allow the community to get in so it's been a great morning so far we're making like Valentine's Day cards for like the veterans in Hopkinton that are like yeah, we're, yeah. Uh, veterans that are overseas and we're gonna send them Valentine's Day cards so yeah. that they won't be that lonely during this Valentine's Day season and just bring a little bit of joy into their world so yeah. Very nice. And are you all in the uh, Girl Scouts? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what troop are you from? Um, we're Girl Scout Troop 65040. Collecting sneakers for Project Just Because, and if anyone comes in, they can um, either bring sneakers or they can donate money, and we would purchase the sneakers. Terrific! And um, for those that don't know, could you maybe talk a little bit about what Project Just Because is? Project Just Because is a uh, place in Hopkinton that um, helps people that 
either have a tragedy happen, like for a fire or something like that, or they help the less fortunate. They get blankets and sneakers and toys at Christmas time for the kids. And uh, one year they collected coats for everyone so that they wouldn't have wouldn't have to freeze when we had a bad winter. Uh -huh. Here we have a bunch of cards, so it's good. and yeah. um, you can either write them yeah, to friends or we're writing them to family. But we also have them for teachers, so you can write a nice thing about one of your favorite teachers. And we, <laughs> and we also have these posters with a bunch of nice quotes, and you can take uh, people can take one and another poster about what we learned along our no, no, journey. So we chose the Amaze journey. It's all about um, friendship, what makes a good friendship, and what determines if your friendship isn't strong. And yeah, so it's been very fun to plan out. Terrific, and um, what Girl Scout Troop you will spell? 68243. <laughs> Hi, we're Community <laughs> Service Club from the Hopkin and High School. And we're writing letters to kids in hospitals. So we put out some guidelines for people, but basically the letter is just say encouraging messages, trying not to focus on their illness, just more positive thoughts, um, and just sending good messages to them. What else is on the dudes? Um, I'm a senior at Hoppington High School, um, and I'm in the National Honor Society here. Terrific, and what do you got going on over here at this table? So today, um, for MLK Day, is one of our big volunteering events. Uh, we've collected lots of donations, um, whether it's toiletries or other supplies for the respite center here in town. Um, and then with all the volunteers that have shown up today, uh, we've made coloring books um, and cards for um, kids and adults at Milford Regional Hospital. So right now, we're working on some cards. Uh, we're drawing pictures in them and uh, just wishing them a happy day. <laughs> Today we are painting the rooms, and and apparently we love painting these rooms because we get to enhance our creativity. Thank you for letting us know. <laughs> Terrific. And um, what made you want to paint the rooms today? Because this room is like kind of like a jail room, so some people wanted to keep it as a very pretty place, like butterflies and quotes. So I have painted some of these, and some people. Some people did the you are enough, and some of, some people. This is the second layer of be a pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, stand tall, wear a crown, and be sweet in the inside. We are making um, bags and cards for um, patients with cancer to sort of it brighten their day a little bit. Terrific. And are, are you a volunteer? Or are you a organization? I'm um, just a volunteer. Just somebody who came to the.